Welcome to our brief discussion on graphing with calculus and technology. So what we're going to do is show how we can use graphing devices to tackle curves that are way too complicated to consider without technology and then use calculus to kind of um, refine our guesses, you know, because from technology, unless you have super advanced technology, it can only give you a rough estimate of where these critical values are, minimums, maximums, inflection points, things like that. But then we can use derivatives to narrow those down even better. So let's look at this example where we've got this polynomial. It's you know high degree, so it's not easy to graph without technology. And then we can use the graphs of its first and second derivative to help estimate all the minimums, maximums, concavities, inflection points, and so on and so forth. Now, if we specify a domain, but not a range, most graphing software will just kind of pick what is best. And so for this first figure, we just chose negative 5 to 5 for our x. And we get a pretty dull, boring graph. It doesn't seem like much is happening. However, if we um, look at it more closely with a, you know, an adjustment of the window, we can actually see that there is something happening near the origin, right? It's not just completely flat. As we zoom in, we can start to see some undulations. And you might be asking yourself, well, you know, how do we know to do this? Well, it's literally just you graph, you see the overall shape, you go, okay, it, it looks like a, you know, it does the quadratic thing where the, it goes to infinity, positive infinity on both ends. So we don't need to worry about what's going on there. We just need to worry about what's happening in the middle. So we just keep zooming in on the middle and zooming in on the middle to see more details. Okay, now, most graphing software, including graphing calculators, have some sort of trace function that let you kind of move a little dot around on the function, and it'll display what the x and y values are. And by doing that on this previous example, we can figure out that we seem to have an absolute minimum, right, the bottom of that little trough, right around negative 15 and a third. And that's our y value, and, and x is equal to about negative 1.62. And we can also see that f is de decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to that negative 1.62, and then it starts to increase and, and just blow up at that point. There also appears to be a horizontal tangent at the origin and some sort of inflection point um, somewhere between negative 2 and negative 1. So now let's try to confirm these things using calculus. So we take the first and second derivatives, which are very easy, right? Because these are polynomial functions, and all we're doing is using the power rule. So simple, simple, simple. And then we can graph the first derivative. And by looking at the first derivative, we remember, okay, what does the first derivative tell us about the shape of the graph? Well. Whenever the first derivative changes from negative to positive, this tells us we have a minimum value. So we can see that it goes from negative to positive right around negative 1.62. And we thought that our minimum was happening right at negative 1.62. So we're in good shape there. But look at what else we see. If we zoom in, and even in this window, we can see that it changes from positive to negative at the origin, and then back from negative to positive at about 0.35. We could figure this out, with, again, with the trace function. So that's telling us that we missed some stuff, right? With this original graph, it just looked flat. So now we got to zoom in even more. Now you, you can see our window is just negative 1 to 1 in both directions. And now we can see this part here where it comes up and seems to touch, right? And then come back down and go back up. So now we're going to have a, a local max and a local min. And we can find those, right? So we, we go, okay, we got a local max um, of, of zero when x is zero. That's, you know, again, we can trace it and it seems to be right at zero. And then a local min of about negative 0.1 when, when that x is 0.35 like we saw in the previous um, first derivative thing. So now we're getting a better idea when we zoom in 
but we can use the second derivative to help us figure out concavity and inflection points. So from, from these two figures, two and four, there appear to be inflection points when x is a little to the left of negative one, and when x is a little to the right of zero. But it's hard to figure out exactly where those things occur, so we go to the second derivative. And again, what does it tell us? Well, we see that the second derivative changes from positive to negative at about negative 1.23, and then it comes back from negative to positive at about 0.19. So we've narrowed that down, and we can get even closer and figure out that it f, the original function, is concave up from negative infinity all the way to negative 1.23, and then, again, from 0.19 to infinity, and then it's concave down, right? This concave downness is going to occur in that inside interval of negative 1.23 to, to 0 0.19. We can find the inflection points, right, where it changes from concavity to concavity as the negative 1.23, and then just plug it into the original function to find the y value. And then the 0 0.19, again, plug it in to find the y value. And so now we've, we've got a really good picture of what the function is really doing. We've found its minimums, its maximums, its, points of in, uh, its inflection points, and its concavity intervals. And we did that with a combination of technology and calculus to kind of refine those tracing guesses that we get from technology. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.